Help us understand That's this. Exactly. Why, what, this, what is this one about? Well, um, let's take uh, uh, sort of a, a little history. Um, we've been battering with 26 taxes um, by 2015. And those taxes were meant to be harmonized by the current administration. But we've had an additional 12. And I'm a bit uh, disappointed that we've got an additional 12. Even uh, one of the ones that is just laughable is uh, emissions gas taxes. And that's nothing to do with telcos. That's more of the oil and gas sector. So we see that taxes are arbitrarily being applied, not only at the federal level, but at the state level. And in, in particular, in some states where I guess it's very easy to apply certain taxes that apply to the natural resource that exists mm. in those states, without naming states. However, this uh, latest uh, directive by CBN uh, comes out of the Cybercrime Prohibition and Prevention Act, so it is actually law. Um, there's many sections in that act that needs to be implemented, and they decided to go for the first one, which is section uh, 44. Uh, which states this 0.05%. Now, if you look at uh, 2017 figures released, uh, NIBSS, we were actually transacting conservatively about 69 trillion naira worth of payments. And these are payments that really are flowing through the system and uh, not owned by any agency. So we consider it uh, really as a tax on those payment systems. And you know that with the ease of doing business, we see that government wants to uh, sort of uh, attract further transactions to go through a system under the cashless uh, policy. However, this is an additional burden uh, that we see will be applied not only to those that are identified to collect those taxes or levy, as you might mm -hmm. call it, uh, but we need to simply say, look, enough is enough. And this would be the 39th applied to our industry. It's viewed as a cash cow, no longer seems to be a, a a priority for the government in terms of other incentives and policies. So uh, that's our stance at the moment that uh, we view this as obviously overtly excessive. Okay. Okay. So I just want to go by what you said. So I'll take us back just a little bit. So you said 26 taxes were already levied on the industry by 2015. The government initially promised to harmonize these taxes. And some of what I've been reading is that some of your complaints have a lot to do with the duplication of taxes. So let's say the federal government, the local government, and the state government are all collecting some proportion of what is ostensibly the same, the same tax. thing. Yeah. So what do you think needs to be done to really bring this together? Or what work is being done to really harmonize these policies? Well, I, I think that uh, we made our position clear in 2016 and 2017. We definitely put uh, position papers in front of the Ministry of Communications and uh, the Ministry of Finance. Uh, they are looking at trying to harmonize the taxes, but what we're seeing is that uh, the recent uh, uh, policy around taxes uh, actually sort of gave a mandate or mandate to the states to even impose certain taxes. Now, the problem with that is that the st states have every reason to look for IGR. I mean, that's not the issue. The issue is that uh, some of the taxes that are collected, maybe at the federal level, should be um, sort of uh, remitted in a scary account so that it's shared. Uh, equally, like they share the FAC, you okay. know, the oil revenues, in a manner so that it doesn't allow the states to also start to look for further revenue for their IGR. So there seems to be a mismatch in between the policy and the implementation execution. So further work needs, needs to be done on the national, uh, the national tax harmonization, okay. but even though, even if that's put in place, we still have to have an implementation where you avoid states still collecting where the federal government has okay. collected. So how exactly do you plan to fight this or protest against this? Well, it's not a protest, it's a law. I mean, so you can't. Well, and if how we, do you, okay, how if do you we, plan to if challenge we, this? If we carry out, well, uh, the, the idea is that uh, I think that the statement that I made in public uh, to the press media was that we can't carry this charge. I mean, it's a charge that will have to be passed on to the consumers. Um, our industry has input costs that are fines in, almost in excess of our revenues. As you know, that our average revenue per subscriber has dropped considerably. Um, the mean figure is now $3.81 and our profit per subscriber is dwindling because the costs are increasing. Tax and unplanned levies are a form of additional cost to our industry. 
but it's but something you there. would definitely, if this goes through, if you're unable to definitely. fight this, I, it would I definitely think, go on to the consumer. I think it will have to. Electronic transactions are done by consumers. I mean, how else are electronic transactions originated? So would it, would it be significant? Uh, Is it something hard a consumer to tell. would I say, think that's, uh, I can live with it? I so. think that uh, when you look at a figure of 69 trillion naira, and you, you apply the 0.05%, that's about 5 billion naira. And as you increase the transactions, and that's just a one channel, if you, as you increase the number of channels you introduce, because it's not only affecting telecoms, it's also affecting the financial the banks, bank, yeah. mm -hmm. insurance, I believe, and, 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 the, and the, the stock exchange. So, you know, you do. There's a lot of people doing gaming, a lot of people doing other transactions. So, if you look at all the channels, you're looking at you know a range of five billion to maybe twenty, thirty billion in the first year, and then to 2020, you could be looking at 200 billion well. <laughs> levy. You know, which is significant on top of the additional. Uh, 38 that we're already facing. Okay, so now what I what I want to move on to is this this 39th proposed tax. I know it's already low, but then it doesn't seem to have been quite implemented. But don't you think it's it, this one this one could be a good idea because we have had cybersecurity issues. But then I also ask you another question: Have you heard of this cybersecurity fund that they're trying to raise revenue for? And what will the function? What do you think the function of this will be? And can you assess that for us a bit? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the actual act itself, it states that they're going to create an agency to do what? We already have the ONSA, we have NCC, um, NCC, NIDA, and other agencies right now are looking at cybercrime and how to reduce the threat of cybercrime. We have the cybercrime emergency response team at different levels of government. So what is it funding? And also operators right now and ICT companies already have software and systems in place to okay. avoid cybercrime. So I can't really for the life of me understand what the fund is going to actually do. Okay, well, 